Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Ali. Thank you so much for tuning in for another video. Today I've got a video letting you guys know how I physically record and make my videos because one of the most commonly asked questions from you guys is actually how do I make and how do I record all of my videos? How are you seeing this video right now on YouTube? If you guys are more interested in just watching content, there was actually two videos that went up yesterday including a live gameplay of a new gun called The Ripper. So definitely check that out. But I know a lot of you guys are interested in this process because you either want to get into it yourself or are just generally interested in how I go about making my videos. Now, back in the day when I started making videos, probably four or five years ago, a long time ago now, uh, the software and the equipment that I used was a lot more basic, it was a lot harder to produce videos, and there wasn't a lot of information out there on how to actually do it. Nowadays, things are a lot simpler, but there was a lot of things out there which, uh, you know, you may be hard to sort of choose which stuff you should actually be going for and what you should be using if you want to make video content for yourself. So within this video, I'm going to let you guys know exactly what I use and how I go about making video content. So you can see on screen here, you've got my face, you've got the gameplay, and the most important thing is all to do with the recording of the gameplay and making sure that is as simple as possible. So we're going to actually leave the gameplay, it's on screen now, and go onto my PC and show you guys exactly what I use to record my footage. Alright guys, so welcome to the inside of my computer where all the magic happens and where I'm going to be going through with you guys the basic steps to get rolling to making your own videos. The very first step is actually getting the gameplay footage from your console onto your computer so you can start creating the video. Back in the day when I first started, being able to record in HD, being able to record over HDMI was almost non-existent and it was extremely tough. Um, but nowadays, uh, there's fantastic products out there just like uh, what I use, which is the Elgato Game Capture HD. Uh, I'm actually going to put a photo on screen here where you can actually see how small it is. I actually take this to events where I go and record footage, so DLC events where I'm playing games outside of my home and is very, very portable in terms of how it's actually set up. You've got your console, you've got the HDMI going from the console to the actual Elgato capture card itself and then from the capture card into your monitor or TV. And then you've got a USB cable from the Elgato into your computer. And then you're set up, you're good to go straight away. There's no delay between using the recording device and the TV, no input lag. It's streamlined and it's perfect and you're ready to start recording. So on screen here, you can see what's currently on my Xbox 360 and what's going on right now. I'm going to run you guys very quickly through how I actually set up the software so I can actually go ahead and record in the best quality possible. So on screen here you can see a preview of what's happening on my uh, TV screen itself. Uh, you can't actually use this as a way of playing the game directly. There's a little bit of delay behind it but it's a perfect way to preview what you're going to actually be seeing uh, when you actually have made your video. So over on the right hand side here we can go over to the settings tab and we can actually select which console we are going to be recording from. Included on this list is the PlayStation 4. Currently the PlayStation 4 cannot be recorded with over HDMI but a patch for that from Sony should be out very very soon. Once that patch is out uh, the Elgato game capture will cover that so that's awesome. And it can I actually record things like iPad and iPhones. I actually recorded my Flappy Bird video over on my second channel using the Elgato, so it works in many, many ways. So once you've selected your console, you can then choose the input. You can also use Component as well as HDMI, but HDMI is simple, easy, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are using that. I mean, you can choose which quality you want to record in. I choose to go uh, 720p on the old consoles just because it preserves uh, the actual basically the space of my computer so I don't have to take up quite as much space but if I'm recording with the new consoles at like Xbox One I'll jump up to 1080p. You can then choose the quality and basically this is just changing the bit rate at which you record at um, and I always keep that right to the top to make it as high as possible and once you've done that you're good to go pretty much you've set up the very basis for how to record your console. You can go in and tinker some of the extra stuff but that's all you need to know you are good to go. Once you've done that you are good. Uh, one of the things you do want to set up is actually knowing where you're going to be saving and where all of the uh, video recordings are going to be going to. So make sure you have a document in a folder somewhere in the computer set up so you know where all the videos are going to be going to. Once you know where it's going, you're good to go. You can start recording those videos. Now, within the actual software itself, it's pretty crazy, but you can actually do a lot of editing, a lot of recording, and a lot of production stuff within the software directly if you want to start off with the basics and start off very easily making videos. So just to you through some of the basics as you can see here you've got in-game audio you can choose um, how loud or how quiet that's going to be I just keep it at the standard because the standard uh, setting is perfect you can actually live commentate within the software itself so if you just want to have your audio and the gameplay all synced up you simply select this button here 
As you can see, my audio is now coming through on the software itself. Uh, you can choose to automatically reduce game sound, which means your audio will always be nice and clear and the game sound will dip a little bit when you're talking to make sure everything's balanced out. So that's a feature you can use to get started and start making live commentary straight off the bat very, very easily. Again, you can change how loud you want that to be. If you're into live stream, you can also live stream directly from the software itself. You can live stream to YouTube, Twitch, any popular live streaming sites. You can choose the bit rate at which you live stream at and you can do all of this within the software, which is pretty damn crazy. Easy. Um, once you have actually recorded a clip, you can actually then go into the editing side of the software and start cutting up a video clip, start getting rid of the start so that you actually um, are cutting the video right where you want the video to start playing at, right when you start the game, and you can also cut it at the end if you want to just make all of the videos within the software nice and easy. I will also be running through how I do it because I actually take the video clips and take separate audio layers like my face cam, etc., my intro and all of that stuff and edit it within a different program, but I'll show you that guys in a second. Now, within the software itself, we've got everything set up, but in terms of the actual recording, this is why I use the Elgato Game Capture and why it's just, it's, it's amazing, especially considering where I started and what's available now, it's fantastic. So in the bottom right here, the big red button is the recording button and you can actually see this bar along here. This bar is actually a playback bar. So this will actually allow you to go back in time and actually preview and actually record pieces of gameplay that have been uh, recorded through this uh, or actually played through the software but you forgot to record. So this is a game I just had against bots that I played literally before starting recording this video. I didn't hit record, so say for example I'm playing a multiplayer game, got an amazing gameplay, got a KEM, and I forgot to hit record. As long as the Elgato software is open, it does not matter. You can just go back in time, up to several hours back in time hit the big red button and then it will start recording up to the current point that you're at and you've saved some gameplay which is absolutely amazing. I use this all the time, it's by far the best, best feature of this software. So that's a very quick overview of the software and uh, the next thing we're going to do is actually jump into what I do with my video once it's been recorded. Now something worth noting is going back to the beginning here and actually looking over the settings. As you can see, you can record up to 1080p 60 frames per second and once you're in 1080p mode it'll go all the way up to 30 megabits which is insane quality and if you want your videos to look great on YouTube which of course you do because you if you want to start making videos now you're competing against people like myself and other people out there that have been making videos for a long time and you want your videos to look good. Now some of the consoles at the moment say the Xbox One, the PlayStation 4 have built in recording features but it only goes up to 720p. The megabits is very, very low. So as I mentioned, you can go up to 30 megabits per second using uh, the Elgato software, but you only go up to four using the in-game recording software on your consoles. And the actual time limit that you can record for is limited between like five and 10 minutes. It's not very long at all. Um, so I would avoid that simply because it's not quite as easy to use. This puts it straight on your computer, gives you a load of additional features to use, and is great for like you if you want to start off making videos. Uh, all of the details about this and prices and stuff can be checked out in the description if you're interested because I know a lot of you guys will ask in the comments if I forget to link it down there. So let's say we've recorded this video. Let's go back to the beginning of when this gameplay started, when it's counting down. I'm now going to hit the big red button. That's gonna, then going to go orange, which means it started to record and then it's up to its current point in time. It's actually still recording, so I can continue to record if I want to, but the game's over and they're going to click that orange button and it's done. That video clip is now saved on my computer. So now we have the video clip recorded. Recorded. We've got the first stage done and it's time to jump into how I use to edit my videos. Alright, so we're now within the software that I personally use to edit. I personally use Sony Vegas. A lot of people like to use different editing programs. This is what I know how to use and how I produce all my videos. So I've opened up the folder here in which the video clip that I've literally just captured with you guys has been saved. Uh, I'm then going to dra drag it straight into my editing software program and I can now get rid of that. I can close that down and just wait for that video to be processed within my editing program. I'm going to run you through a very basic edit and then show you guys another file where I've actually already made a video. So here I've now got the gameplay that I want. What I do straight away is disable resample the video just so it's nice and smooth on YouTube. I'll then crop it down on either side so that the gameplay is starting in the right place and finishing in the right place. Link it up with the start of the video here. As you can see, I've got my intro right at the beginning of the video. As you can see in the little preview window up there, I've got my overlay here as well, which I can then position anywhere within my uh, editing software that I wish. So if I make this a little bit smaller here, so it's actually not taking up the whole of the screen, 
I can then move that around as well and then that will appear in a different position on the video as well and the game plays within the edited file I can then add an end slate as well so that's the ending that I'll use um, as you can see black ops 2 zombies is not what I'll actually finish the video with I'll actually add in a different additional things but it's now within the editing file now that's very basic and none of my videos are like that what my videos are like if I close that down um, are more like this so as you can see here I've got lots of different layers going on I've got my uh, logo at the top I've then got my overlay here is actually um, the little blue overlay around my webcam so that will get rid of that there and then that just makes the video look, look a little bit nicer I've then got my webcam overlay here which is the actual video portion of my web webcam I've got my audio down here and the audio is actually uh, linked in with the webcam. So I actually record my audio with the webcam and then sync it up with my gameplay. In terms of how I sync up my gameplay with the webcam and audio, uh, just before a game starts, I actually count to six. Don't ask why I count to six. You can count to two, you can count to whatever. I just go one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I do an action on screen as I count and then to sync those up, cut it down so that the beginning and start of the video is in the correct place and then I know that everything's going to be synced up. So if this was actually the video I got the KEM within Infected which is awesome. Um, it starts off here with a little bit of editing I did, um, hyping up the video where I, sh I showed some of the fails that I got and then we jump into the gameplay. You've got some music down the bottom here as well. I think if I actually play it you may be able to hear it as well. And then the video starts off. The first challenge to get past would be not being effective. So you can preview all of that within the editing software that I use and then once you get to the end of the video you've got the end slate except I've actually added in the additional images that I actually want to use. Um, as you can see there I've got both video from my main channel and my second channel once I've edited it all together and produced a video that I feel is worthy I can then select the portion of the video that I want to render. I can then go to render video. This will then bring up lots of options here. I have um, my default settings for the YouTube videos that I make. Um, if I go into customize, you can have a look at what I like to use. And sometimes I'll adjust this. For example, again, if it's a next gen gameplay, I'll up upgrade it to 1080p render. You can then choose all of the settings you want to use on screen here. Once that's been done, I'll then choose a file in which I want to save it in. Once I have done that, I can then click render and then the render process will take part, which is where it's actually formulating it into a single video file that I can then upload onto YouTube. Uh, lucky enough, I've got a good PC. I've got an Alienware PC. So if this is about an eight and a half minute, the video will take about eight to nine minutes to render. So that's nice and quick. Back in the day, it took me absolutely ages to render a video, like an hour to render a five minute video. But once that process is then finished, Finished. basically the video is then as a complete file which you can then upload straight to YouTube and share with your friends and share with anybody else that's watching as well. So there you go guys that has been an overview of how I make my videos if I covered absolutely everything in real time it'll literally be like a three or four hour video as the whole process drags out but I've tried to combine it down into a video which is short and sweet for you guys so you can understand exactly how to do it and replicate it yourself if you so wish. If you want to check out the software that I use um, you can check it out in the description as I said I know a lot of you guys will want links to all of the stuff so you can check all of the links down below um, and hopefully it's been informative to you guys. I know it's been a little bit different but I know that a lot of you guys want to know how I do it and hopefully it gives you guys a platform and a chance to start producing your own content as well. But there you go guys if you've got any additional questions feel free to either tweet them at me or leave them down in the comment section I'll try and answer them for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. That's been an overview of how I make my videos for YouTube. You can check out more videos on screen here, including a look at the brand new Ripper weapon that was released yesterday and also a new video on my second channel. So cheers for watching guys. Hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you on my next video.